Hi everyone, in this video you will learn about the spring force. The spring force is the force that occurs when an object is attached to a spring that has been stretched or compressed. Let's start by looking at what happens when you stretch a spring. If we have this spring and we pull it to the right, we are going to stretch it so it becomes longer. But we know if we release this object, the spring will pull it back. And that pulling force is the spring force. Now let's look at what happens when we compress a spring. So if I grab this object and I push it in, I will compress the spring and make it shorter. But we know if I let go of the object, the spring will push it forward. That pushing force is the spring force. And if you need to calculate the spring force, you can use this equation, which says that the spring force is equal to negative kx, where x is the displacement from equilibrium. Now, what does this mean? Well, if I have this spring and I stretch it, its original position was its equilibrium position. And after I stretched it, it went a certain distance x which represents the displacement from equilibrium. Then we have the spring constant k. This has units of newtons per meter, and it represents the stiffness of the spring. So a very large spring constant means you have a very stiff spring that's hard to compress and stretch. And then finally, we have this negative sign. And I find a lot of my students get confused by this negative sign and why it's there. Well, the negative sign is there because the spring force is always in the opposite direction of the object's displacement. So for example, let's look at some hanging springs. And let's say I stretch it so it gets longer. That displacement is down, but the restoring spring force will be up because it's pulling the spring back up. So you can see the displacement and the spring force are in opposite directions. And now that we understand the spring force equation, let's do some examples to practice what we learned. Our first question says we have a hanging spring with a spring constant of 500 newtons per meter. And when we attach a block to the spring, it stretches by 20 centimeters. And we wanna know what is the mass of the block? Now, the first thing I like to do is draw a free body diagram, which represents the object after it's been stretched. So we would have the force of gravity pushing down on it, and we would have the spring force, which wants to pull back up on it. Next, we will make our F net equation, which would be the spring force minus the force of gravity. F net can be replaced with zero because the block is not moving after it's been stretched. And we can replace the force of the spring with negative kx and the force of gravity with mg. Then I will rearrange the equation and isolate for the mass m. And what we see is that the mass of the block is equal to negative kx divided by g. I will plug in the value for the spring constant k, and you might be wondering what is the value of x? Well, x is the displacement from equilibrium. If we set equilibrium as zero, and we imagine we have a number line, we are going down from zero. So our displacement x would be negative 20 centimeters. And always remember, you have to convert to meters. And then I just input the value for the acceleration due to gravity, and what we find is the block's mass is equal to about 10.2 kilograms. And that's the answer to this question. Let's do one more example. In this question, we're told we have a horizontal spring, which is compressed by five centimeters when a person pushes on it with a force of 10 newtons. And we wanna know what is the spring constant? Now, the first thing I like to do is draw a free body diagram. And we can see we have the pushing force, we have the spring force, and we have the force of gravity and the normal force. Next, we will make an F net equation. And this would be F net X because we only care about the forces acting on the X axis. So that would be the spring force minus the pushing force. We can replace F net X with zero because once the spring is compressed, it's not moving. We can replace the force of the spring with negative KX 
and we can replace the pushing force with 10 newtons. Then we will rearrange this equation and isolate for the spring constant k. And we find that k is equal to negative 10 newtons divided by the displacement x. And if you're wondering what the correct value for the displacement is, well, remember we have our spring, then it gets pushed in and compressed. If we mark the equilibrium position as zero, and we imagine there's a number line, and we're moving left along the number line, that means our displacement is negative five centimeters. And remember, you have to convert this to meters. And when you do the math, you find that the spring constant is 200 newtons per meter. And with that, now you know how to use the spring force equation, which is also called Hooke's Law, to answer forces questions where objects are connected to springs.